Hey everyone, so today is day two of our plant haul planting and we are going to attempt to get the bottle gentian in today and the tough stuff hydrangeas. The only thing that is going to be extra is that we have to dig out two day, day, day lilies to get in the hydrangeas. Not sure if we're going to be planting the day lilies or if we're just going to be putting them in pots trying to overwinter them in plastic pots. Um, so that's the only wild card here. I'm not 100% sure about that, but stay tuned and we'll take you along with us. We've got our trusty card again. I got the two bottle gentians in here. We've already walked the um, two hydrangeas up to the location where they're going to get planted. And I just noticed that this bottle gentian has a new bloom. Well, a bud anyway, that was not on there when I bought it two weeks ago. Anyway, so let's go walk up and see where these plants are gonna go. I think I showed it in the last video, but these two daylilies are the two that are getting pulled. And again, uh, not sure if we're gonna transplant them today. I don't want to have to keep moving things around. I mean, I do have a place where I think these can be used. Just don't know if I want to transplant them this year or just put them in pots. And let them settle in their pots for the season until next year. So, hmm, that's just, just not 100% sure about that right now. But these are the two hydrangeas. Uh, there's one there, which is going to go here. And then there's another one here. And again, these are the tiny, tough stuff. So let's get planting. This is the location where I want to put the two bottled gentians. Um, not exactly sure where. Possibly here. Possibly in here between the two pinks. So that's a Joe Pie. This is a turtle head. I don't think I want to put them here because this is the path the water takes to get into the rain garden and Oh, I get so depressed when I come up here and I see half my stuff eaten, completely defoliated, and I don't know why. Anyway, that's, a, that's another discussion for a different day. So anyway, the bottle gentian are going up here somewhere. I'm just not exactly sure where yet. Um, they will need some shade, and we, we have a shrub that will be transplanted next spring from our bottom rain garden. I ordered a summer suite, a small one, I think. It was called Vanilla Spice. Supposed to be like a three by three or a two by two. And they sent me Ruby Spice. And that is like a six to eight foot tall. So it's way too big for that bottom rain garden. So that's gonna get transplanted up here, close to the edge. So eventually that will provide some shade in here, especially later in the summer. Uh, I'm just not sure if it's gonna provide enough shade. But anyway, uh, I'm gonna play with the placement of these and we'll get back to you. Uh, okay, so I think if you can see the black pots there, that's where they're going to go. So that they've already got shade built into the landscape and we don't have to wait to plant that summer sweet up here in the spring for them to get shade. And again, these are a nice native shade loving, moisture loving plant that will naturalize up here. Uh, again, we're not going to see them from the house, but that's not really the point. It's, it's really just to have some native um, moisture loving plants up here like the turtle heads, the irises, the magical moonlight button bushes, goldenrods, the joe pie weed, the acarus, the holly, which is Ilex opaca, the native, and the pretty acarus. So we'll get those in the ground and then we will uh, show you once we're finished. Yeah, I see a root in there. I'm not sure what it's from. It wasn't big enough to worry about. These are only in gallon size containers, so we're not going to have to go too big with the holes.
we did not mulch or do anything up here. When it was installed in 2021, uh, the person who installed it used leaf litter, which was really, really nice and very fine. Then last year, the guy who does our mulch, we asked him to do some more leaf litter up here and um, not impressed because it's not really leaf litter. It's just big old pieces of bark and sticks. Um, and it's just, to me, it's not attractive looking. So I think next year we're going to go with uh, regular mulch on the front side that faces the house and then just maybe leaf litter up here and we'll do it ourselves because I can get leaf litter at a different location that's a little bit more fine. I think we're actually just going to put the two daylilies here for now. That way we don't have to see them because I don't really want to see them until they're moved into their permanent location. And there's a room up here, so it's an easy place to just tuck them away for the winter until we decide to create the new bed that will be another video where they're going to be placed next year. So decision made on the daylilies, we're just going to put them right here. Some progress made. We got one daylily out, um, and you can see why I don't really want lots of daylilies around anymore. They're really pretty when they're in bloom, which is only for a while. And then they just get all this dead. Now, it is obviously late in the season, so there's going to be more dead on these now. But if you, I don't know, a couple months ago when we transplanted or we pulled out six daylilies and gave them to my neighbor and cleaned them up first, we got just as much dead out of them. And that was in August. So that's why I'm kind of going off daylilies and trying to at least get rid of some of them. Now, we will reuse these, but again... Uh, it's just two, so I think I can handle two. And for some reason, these are much messier than some of the other daylilies we have. Uh, these are the Stelladoros. I have Alabama Jubilee in a different bed. Um, and these just don't seem to be nearly as messy. But anyway, so that's why we're getting rid of them and replacing them with long-blooming shrubs that don't need to be cleaned up, like... Firelight Tidbit Hydrangeas, the Little Quick Fire Hydrangeas, and now these Tough Stuff Hydrangeas. And I think they'll look really pretty up here. We realized we need some of the soil that we dug out of the holes to put the daylilies in because the root balls for the daylilies were a heck of a lot bigger than the root balls for the Tiny Tough Stuff. Even though they were in three gallon containers, the root balls that the daylilies had on them were quite large, so we need to fill in the holes before we can actually plant the uh, tiny tough stuff. So my husband just went up to get the uh, two black containers that, uh, oh, the Blue Point Junipers were in. That's where the soil came, that's where the soil that came out of the ground when he planted the daylilies went into, so we're going to use that to fill in these holes a little bit. tough stuffs are in and they do look tiny <laughs> they are tiny compared to the daylilies but they'll get bigger they are uh, 18 to 24 inch tall and wide so they will kind of max out at where the size of the strong box is next to it maybe a little wider I think that strong box is probably about two feet tall so I mean they'll fill in nicely I don't anything was gonna interfere with the stone path um, and they will be pretty lace cap pink 
purplish flowers. I may add some soil acidifier to these because I do like blue hydrangeas better than pink. But we'll see what they do in the spring. So uh, thanks for coming along and please give the video a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Bye.